Hi, I'm Sheila Mahoney of SMJ Strategies here to present a case study of conducting a win-loss review program. Uh, today's example is uh, very relevant to thinking about why do something uh, like this, why conduct a win-loss review program. Um, maybe you are thinking about st stiffer competition, looking at this year's projections, maybe your goals are higher than they've ever been before, maybe you've had an unexpected loss, maybe you're simply sharpening your corporate strategy pencils, trying to think about uh, what else could be done, looking at your sales and um, history and competitive intelligence in, from a different lens, perhaps. And uh, this, case, this case study will certainly uh, complement uh, those activities as well as you look forward to what more can be done to increase your win conversions. So let's get into the case study. Um, this was a program that um, SMJ Strategies conducted for a clinical and regulatory operations uh, technology vendor. So it was a combination of technology as well as services. Um, mostly the strategy was technology. As a matter of fact, they had uh, they were at steady state a six million dollar annual revenue company based in the U.S. Um, they also had uh, approximately ten million dollars of outside investment to expand the technology platform and and grow into a critical area. Uh, there was competition in that particular area. In, in this case, it was uh, what this particular platform was, was specific to clinical operations, not so much regulatory. Um, there were competitors in the market. Um, and there was an 18-month sell cycle on a critical use case client that um, ended up, they ended up getting that email, um, you know, sorry, we've gone in another direction. And it was quite unexpected. It was also very difficult to go back to the board, uh, especially the investors sitting on the board, and report that this opportunity had been lost. And um, the takeaway of this experience was that um, they lost, there was unanimous internal agreement that they lost because they were missing certain features that the competitors had. And they needed, the, the conclusion was they needed to double down on investing in software development. They were going to take away budget from other areas such as um, sales and marketing and some other strategic initiatives um, and some of their regulatory product lines. And um, they're going to funnel it all in, into an accelerated development um, schedule. Now, before, they made that decision before they executed on that decision at the board level. It was decided to conduct an objective review uh, of this opportunity to see if there could be some evidence to be gained to support that position and to support those decisions. And they made an election to bring SMJ strategies in and conduct an objective win loss review program, or in this case, it was a loss review. Um, so what happened was uh, it was a US-based drug sponsor. Um, it was actually one of the larger um, sponsors on the West Coast. I'll leave it to you to take a guess who that is. Of course, all of this needs to be anonymized, but um, it was US-based, was West Coast-based. Um, the deal size itself, the opportunity at play, the revenue amount was between two and five hundred thousand dollars. And um, I, for anonymity's sake, I, I can't go into additional detail as to exactly the nature of the work. Um, and um, as I was going through interviewing the stakeholders, because that is part of the SNJ strategies methodology, it's based on qualitative research techniques. Um, Unfortunately, quantitative in this particular capacity is not possible. You need to have a sample size of over 30 in order to get any sort of statistical significance. So in this case, it was all qualitative, which um, is a way of conducting interviews, removing bias. I also did not work for the company. I was not inv invested in the sell cycle at all. I wasn't involved. Um, so essentially the methodology is based on opening up the lines of communication 
um, establishing first and foremost that the selling is over, that this is simply a research project, that the vendor wants to do better, wants to take what they can learn from this experience and then apply it, apply it to future business and for the good of the industry um, as a whole. I mean, if vendors can learn to serve the market better, then everybody benefits. And so that is one of the ways to get the, um, the clients invested in spending this additional energy. I mean, certainly for the clients, it, it, it can be difficult to get folks on the line, uh, get them to invest the time. But again, presenting it as a research effort. Um, and we were going to, I was testing this hypothesis that it, that it was uh, a lack of features that caused them to go into a different direction. And the end result, cutting to the chase, because uh, we want this to be a short video clip, um, it turned out to be something completely and totally unexpected. And through the course of conducting these stakeholder interviews, I, I spoke to three different stakeholders at the drug sponsor, um, from procurement, uh, from clinical operations, and IT. And they all corroborated this story that um, apparently during one of the more critical demos during the sales cycle, and again, this was unbeknownst to the vendor, completely unbeknownst to the vendor, um, there was a demonstration going on where everybody was in the room listening to the demo. The, you, the vendor was based where they were. Uh, it was a remote demo. Uh, the sponsor group decision-making committee was in a conference room on the West Coast. And somebody out in the hallway heard that that group was on the line with this particular vendor. And this person was not involved in this decision at all, but heard that this vendor was involved came into the room, interrupted the demo, asked everybody to go on mute, and told that decision-making uh, group confidentially never to do business with this vendor because the salespeople uh, are incredibly aggressive. And once you give them your phone number, they will never stop calling you. And, and went on to, apparently went on to um, go into great detail about the negative experience that they had with the salespeople. Now that was a different group uh, than who was working on behalf of the vendor during this entire sales cycle. As a matter of fact, part of that $10 million investment was an overhaul of the existing sales force. So all of these folks who were associated with that vendor from several years before, they were no longer there. The company had completely revamped, uh, gone in a different direction, completely new faces. And I, I actually, uh, I having, worked with them, I was very impressed with them, but something that was unbeknownst to everybody was the extent to which um, the need for damage control associated with the prior sales team. And really there was no understanding of uh, how, much, um, how much difficulty that had caused on the client side. And uh, the clients themselves, this is a, another reason for objectivity, they were so uncomfortable that even though they had a very good relationship with the new sales team, they really didn't know how to address this subject. It was so, um, you know, it was just something that would went much easier unsaid than said. And um, therefore, the current sales team remained ignorant of this fairly enormous problem, which ended up poisoning the rest of the sales cycle. So. The, the issue there is that objectivity yields more information than anybody involved in the sell cycle, involved in the vendor, could, could most likely get. Um, and the idea of conducting a review like this is critical. When you think about the amount of money that this vendor was going to spend on feature development, when in fact the reason they lost had absolutely nothing to do with features at all whatsoever. It had to do with the legacy of a, the sales team from several years back. So it's, um, I'm never, um, I am never uh, bored with this type of work because there are always interesting reasons why decisions are made. And although you may have a, a total conviction of knowing exactly what happened and exactly why they decided to do what they did, 
you really don't know for sure unless you conduct some sort of objective um, research on the matter. Even then, it's not two plus two equals four. It's not a complete um, clarity, but it is one way of receiving at least some objective evidence for what is essentially the basis of your entire corporate strategy. So thank you for joining this short video case study presentation. Hopefully it was a good use of your time. And if you're interested in learning more, please email me at smj at smjstrategies.com. That's S as in Sam, M as in Mary, J as in Jewelry at smjstrategies.com. Happy to help. I'm very passionate about helping vendors understand their clients better uh, and helping clients and drug sponsors uh, getting more value from the vendor ecosystem as well. And really the key to that is information, accurate information for everyone's benefit. Thanks very much.